James Swanick here. Welcome to day five of the five-day alcohol-free challenge where we just put all of this together and we make it work and we give you the formula for being alcohol-free for your remaining days, if you so choose, of course. We've got folks joining us here. We've got James, Jen, Margaret, Chris, Luke, Ben, Mary, Melanie. Nice to have you guys here. Uh, I've got people all over the world, people in London, Sydney, Pennsylvania, St. Louis, New Orleans. I am in Tula, Mexico, as I am recording this. And if you've been on the previous four days of this four-day challenge, you would have learned how to socialize without alcohol, how to reduce cravings, how to rewire your brain around alcohol. We had uh, Coach Victoria, Victoria English Martin, who is uh, the head coach at Project 90, uh, join us on day four and talk about her ways of reducing uh, alcohol. Uh, Victoria, Coach Victoria is a cancer survivor uh, and has been uh, almost a few years alcohol-free now. Uh, in fact, there's a full interview you can hear with her on the podcast, the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. If you haven't yet listened to the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast, it's in iTunes or over on Spotify. You can just type in Alcohol-Free Lifestyle or you can type my name in, James Swanick, and it will come up. But there are lots of success stories there, lots of amazing breakthroughs of people who've gone through the process got long-term power over drinking and are now living an alcohol-free life. Uh, Alcohol-free, the alcohol-free lifestyle doesn't necessarily mean that you quit forever. It can mean that. But what it does certainly mean is that you now have power to choose. Alcohol no longer controls you. You control alcohol. Some of our best clients have gone uh, now um, five years alcohol-free, in fact. Some of our best Project 90 clients, because we only started this in December 2018, they're still alcohol-free two and a half years later. Folks like Angela Ponsford, who's the uh, uh, a single mom of twin girls in uh, uh, Lennox Head on the east coast of Australia. Uh, folks like John Keltner, who's the father of one, who uh, attracted his dream partner uh, as a result of going through quitting drinking. He, it's actually kind of disgusting the way that he posts all over Facebook saying how much in love he is with his new romantic partner who he loves very much. Not really disgusting. It's very touching, I should say. <laughs> I'm just making a little bit of fun of him. Uh, but he's a man in his 40s, late 40s, you know, he was a single father of one. And as a result of being alcohol free, he has now attracted the love of his life, he says, which is incredible. Uh, folks like Roseanne, who's a 60-something retiree in, in Arizona, who's still alcohol-free today, um, having been in the, um, joined us in our Project 90 program a year and three months ago. Lots of folks also who um, are drinking just modestly now. Folks like Joe Worley, who's a 50-something um, out in, where is he? I think he's in, is it Idaho? I think he's in Idaho. Uh, Married, father of two wonderful children, and he quit for, I think, six months and then had a drink, thought, nah, this is not really serving me, but I'll have a drink on occasion, and now has a drink on occasion a handful of times during the year, and that's absolutely fine with him, and he feels amazing. He's uh, got his dream job, and he feels fantastic. So there's lots of great success stories. Um, Just before we get into today's day five, if you want to see some of those success stories, again, Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcasts. Uh, in Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Uh, there's also a page where you can go alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash apply. And there's some videos. If you just scroll down that page, you'll see some videos there of many of our success stories. And you can get a feel for a little bit about what Project 90 is and how it might be able to help you. I'm going to share my screen here for a second. Um, uh, just a reminder, Project 90, we have an 87% success rate of clients getting to at least 90 consecutive days alcohol-free on their first attempt. Almost 100% success rate of clients getting there uh, on no more than, than three attempts. And most former clients, like I just said, uh, they're either still alcohol-free years later or they now only drink modestly on rare occasions. Uh, if we compare that to AA, has less than a 10% success rate. Uh, If you're an inpatient or outpatient treatment center, you're looking at $100,000 plus. Again, less than a 10% success rate. In fact, the treatment centers have less than a 5% success rate, if you can believe it. It's crazy. Uh, Willpower and motivation, less than 10% success rate, as you probably know. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to me. Because if you could have done it through motivation and willpower alone, you wouldn't be listening to me. You'd just be getting on with your life. 
not digesting content around how to get power over your over your drinking. So you already know from experience that trying to do it on your own, trying to do it with willpower, motivation is not enough. It doesn't work. Uh, what we have found uh, has worked, and we, some of the things we're going to go over here uh, is uh, a, appropriate coaching, appropriate accountability, an appropriate community, uh, making sure that it's fun and simple, uh, and also investing in yourself, having skin in the game. Um, so today we're going to go over some of those concepts, why it's important to have coaching, accountability, why it's important that it's fun, why it's important that you have skin in the game, why it's important you have a community. There's a lot of neuroscience around this. So we'll get a little bit technical around that. Well, not technical, but we'll get a little bit of um, neuroscience knowledge into us. Uh, but I want to leave you from today with you having a very clear outline as to what your next steps, whether you do this on your own or whether you do it uh, working with us. Now, some of you are going, to, um, are going to want to go and do this on your own and continue doing that. And that's fine. And take everything that I've learned, everything that you've learned here over the past five days, steal all of the stuff that I've given you. I want the best for you. I, I like go do it, go and live a great life. I have people who message me all the time. In fact, I just got two emails this very morning. In fact, why don't I just pull it up um, from a gentleman in my native country, all the way back down in Australia, uh, who messaged me saying, that he and his wife are now, I think, 40-something days alcohol-free. Where is it? Let me try and find it here. No, that's not him. You know what? I'll come back to that. I'm sorry. I don't want to get distracted here. I want to make sure I stay focused. Uh, if, indeed, I find it uh, in a few minutes' time, I will read it out. Otherwise, let's keep going. Uh, at the end of this call, I will um, uh, walk you through what Project 90 is and how it might be able to help you. Again, um, some of you will want to... Um, join us in that. We have another group starting very soon. Some of you will want to get the additional support and accountability and community uh, of that group that's been helping our clients now since 2018. Some of you will go off and try to attempt it on, on your own. Um, whatever way you choose, uh, know I support you. Uh, grab a pen and paper, take some notes, and um, let's get into this. All right, so we're going to do a bit of a review here of uh what we have gone over here so we can wrap all of this together so let me just uh share my screen here we go so uh on day one we talked about the importance of stop trying to quit alcohol you might recall if you are constantly saying to yourself don't drink i shouldn't drink i have to quit i'm quitting then you're going to focus on what you should not do, which means you're more likely to do that very thing. So every time you say, don't drink, I shouldn't drink, I need to, to stop drinking, you're thinking about drinking, which is increasing the likelihood that you're going to drink. Not to mention the fact that when you say, I need to quit, I must quit, I have to quit, it's very heavy. The language of have and need and must, there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of pressure and of course, when pressure builds and it builds and it builds, we want to relieve that pressure. And the relief usually comes from drinking alcohol or, quite frankly, it comes from overeating or spending too much money or fighting with our husband or our wife or our children. That pressure builds and it builds and it builds until you can't take it anymore and then you reach for a drink. So instead of making drinking this really dark, heavy, willpower, white-knuckling it experience, what I invite you to do is make things easy and simple and fun. And we do that starting with our language. For example, I easily only drink water, ice, and a piece of lime tonight. Henry Ford once famously said, the man who says he can and the man who says he cannot are both correct. So if we say, I can't do it, I can't quit drinking, well, guess what? You won't quit drinking. But if you say, I can, that has a completely different energy to it. So I easily only drink water, ice, and a piece of lime tonight. I easily only drink water. I'm now here today in Tulum, Mexico. I just arrived here yesterday afternoon. Last night, I went out for a drink. And when I say for a drink, I went out for an alcohol-free drink. There were people drinking alcohol. I just ordered a soda water, ice, and a piece of lime. Yesterday afternoon, there were people drinking cocktails around the pool in the uh, complex where I am staying here in Tulum, Mexico at the moment. I 
ordered juice. I had a green, I had a green juice, and then I had a uh, it wasn't an orange juice. I think it was a, a terang. What was it? What's, what's a orange? Not orange. I can't remember the name of it. Terang juice, taranja. I can't remember. I'm sorry. But in any case, people were drinking cocktails. I was drinking, I guess you could call it mocktails. I was drinking healthy juices. I slept 10 hours last night. I was very tired because I flew from um, San, Old San Juan, Puerto Rico to uh, Cancun, Mexico. So my, I had to get up at uh, um, 3.30 in the morning, yesterday morning, to get to the airport for 4 a.m. in San Juan in order to catch a 5 a.m. flight. I actually didn't get there in time to the airport, so I had to delay my flight um, and get a later flight. Anyway, cut a long story short, I had uh, about 12, let's see, 13, 14 hours of travel yesterday, either in cars or on planes, and I was exhausted when I got to town because of all that travel when I got to Tulum, Mexico. The last thing I wanted to do was drink alcohol. The last thing I wanted to just fill my body with vitamin C, drink lots of water, stretch a little bit, get some sunshine because I've been like cooped up in a plane and and I knew that I wanted a great night's sleep. So I went to uh, this little bar slash restaurant last night, had a meal, ordered um, juice and um, soda water ice and a piece of lime. And then I went home and I slept 10 beautiful hours. And I was up this morning. I went into the gym. And I ran about 15 minutes on the treadmill, just did 10 um, sprints and with like a minute of jogging in between. Then I came and did a a Project 90 coaching call uh, after that, um, coaching our clients, which felt amazing and terrific. And then afterwards, my friend uh, David, who's a British fellow, came and picked me up on his moped and we went off to a place called Holistica here in Tulum. And we just had a gorgeous, beautiful breakfast um, with some poached eggs on avocado and some nice almond almond bread toast i had a green juice and another orange juice vitamin c it's now 12 20 in the afternoon um, where i am here local time where i'm doing this i'm sharing all this detail with you because i want to communicate to you how i and how you can choose to live your life in terms of health wealth love and happiness so even though i was tired notice i didn't just go and get a packet of chips and a big you know, heavy hamburger and fries and order a couple of drinks because I was exhausted and tired. No, I went to the bar and I ordered um, soda water initially and then a green juice afterwards. Notice that the easiest thing is to, quote, unquote, relax with a cocktail by the pool. I decided not to do that. I decided to drink a green juice and, and drink lots of water. I woke up this morning feeling refreshed from my sleep, but I still exercised because I know that's going to create energy throughout the day. And when I went to have breakfast brunch with my friend David this morning at Holistica, I ordered healthy food and a green juice. So that's why I can keep my energy throughout the day because I'm making these choices as as I go along. There are opportunities everywhere to drink copious amounts of alcohol. There's opportunities everywhere when you're tired, say, oh, I just want to have a drink. We had one of our Project 90 clients recently whose mother was diagnosed with stomach cancer And uh, he was devastated by it. And he said he really felt the urge to have a drink in that moment. Yet he had the tools, he had the community, he could reach out and say, this is how I'm feeling. And he had a bunch of people reach in and and support him through that. And he stayed alcohol free because now he has the tools. Even though he feels like he wants a drink, he knows that life is so much better without alcohol. And, And in the days afterwards, he was so appreciative of the fact and so proud of himself for not having that drink so this is the life that you can live when you choose this lifestyle that's why i named my podcast the alcohol free lifestyle um, podcast i use the word lifestyle because it's a lifestyle and all of the statistics show us that more and more uh, all the statistics all of the statistics show us that more and more people are choosing this alcohol free lifestyle um I have a literary agent who's about to secure me uh, a book deal and I'll be writing a book um, which should be coming out 2022 and it's it's aimed at entrepreneurs and business owners and high um, performing individuals and the whole book is about choosing this alcohol-free lifestyle as a way to uh, have more connection with your husband, wife and kids, to do better in business, to make better investment choices to lose 20 pounds, to have more energy, to sleep better, 
as opposed to what probably is going on right now for at least most of you, which is fogginess, irritability, tiredness, lethargy, um, pasty or, or, or skin, sunken eyes. Um, I said fatigue. I want to just em- emphasize that. Um, irritability, strained relationships, not communicating with your partner. I can tell you some folks go come through Project 90 and end up getting a divorce or end up asking their partners for divorce because they finally get the clarity of being alcohol-free. They realize that they've been in an unhappy marriage for so long that once they quit the alcohol, now all of a sudden they've got a, they're faced with the clarity. It's like, oh, now I'm understanding. I shouldn't be in this marriage. That can happen. It's very uncomfortable. So I'm not here pretending that when you go alcohol-free that everything's going to be sunshine and rose and rainbows. It will be eventually, but during that process, you, might, you may have to face things that you don't want to face, that you've been pushing down the road, that you've been suppressing with your drinking, with the alcohol. So if you feel like you're ready to wake up and get out of the fog, cutting alcohol out of your life is the first step. It's an important step. And a lot of the coaching that I do isn't really helping people quit drinking. It's helping people get clear about their life and what they want to do and who they want to be and how they want to show up for their friends and their family and their community. And we do that by helping them quit drinking for 90 days. Let me tell you, the easiest thing in the world is is to is to stop drinking. Do you want to know how easy it is? You literally just do not put your hand on an alcoholic drink and drink it. It's so simple. But yet, why do we still do it? It's all of that underlying issues that we've got in our heart and our gut that makes us reach for that drink. That's what we deal with. That's what we process. That's what we unearth. That's what you will discover when you go through the process of living an alcohol-free lifestyle because the clarity, it's crystal clear. All of a sudden, you will get you may get uncomfortable because you've been putting, postponing, procrastinating on decisions for a long time. So this call will be a little bit of tough love and it'll be, you know, a lot of love as well. There are, I recognize that there are different learning styles for people. Some people love my style and when I'm giving tough love and I'm just putting it out and here it is. Other people get really turned off by that and that's fine. I am not for everyone. What are your choices? Well, you can do AA. Seems pretty sad and depressing to me. Doesn't work 90% of the time. You've got to drive to a meeting, sit around a group and say, I'm an alcoholic. When you know that deep down you're not, you just drink too much. You can cough up $150,000 to go and do inpatient treatment center. You can waste $100,000 just doing it on your own and trying. Stop, start, stop, start for another 10 years if you want. I'm 45. I'm going to be 46 this year. Man, I'm going to be in my 50s soon. I don't want the next 45 years to be a struggle. I want them to be amazing and simple and easy and fun. So sooner or later, you, you know, if you're in an unhappy marriage or you're in an unhappy career or you're dissatisfied with life in general and you feel disconnected, that ain't going to get any better until you take action, right? You want different results, you've got to take different actions. So I am going to invite you on this call to take a different action than the one that you've already been doing. It's going to feel uncomfortable for some of you. Some of you won't be interested and you'll you'll go off and go elsewhere. That's okay. Let's keep going. Um, We talked about on day two, designing your environment, removing the visual cues of alcohol and replacing them with visual cues of health and vitality. That means removing... Objects like glass, uh, wine glasses and corkscrews, bottles, and liquor cabinets, just get it out of your house. Just get rid of that stuff. Because every time you walk by it or you see it, it's triggering you to think about alcohol. I'm in a, um, a place right, ne- right now. I'm actually in, a, in an apartment. It's kind of like an Airbnb thing. It's kind of like a, it's not quite a luxury place, but it's close enough. And they left me a nice bottle of red wine as a welcome gift when I came in. Isn't that nice? It's still sitting over there. Won't be drinking it. But for you who's still trying to get power over your drinking, each time you see a bottle of wine, it, think, it makes you think about alcohol. It makes you want to drink. 
doesn't make me want to drink because I'm 10 and a half years alcohol free. But the point is in your own home, just get rid of those visual cues of alcohol, get rid of them uh, and replace them with healthy cues like glass mason jars and fill them up with water, roses or flowers, buy yourself a bouquet of flowers, get a nice bowl of lime or lemon or some fruit, nice, colorful, healthy looking uh, fruits and foods in your house. In fact, there's a book called, um, what is the book called? Uh, forgotten. But anyway, there was a study in this book that showed that the reason why human beings love um, paintings or portraits, or sorry, landscapes, I should say, the reason why human beings love landscape art is because of, of a couple of reasons. One, when you see a landscape and it's a long way away, subconsciously our human brain can see that there are no enemies between our viewpoint and the horizon. And we like that as human beings because back when we were cavemen and cave women and there were rival tribes or wolves or bears coming to eat us, we wanted to make sure that there was a big open space so we could see them coming. So in today's modern world, we still have kept a lot of that reptilian behavior in our brains. And the reason why we love landscapes so much, the reason why we love big, vast, open fields is because it gives us an opportunity to see danger coming over the horizon, which gives us an opportunity to prepare or to run or to flee. Same thing in uh, why we love imagery or why we love the rainforest, right, with flowers and creeks and lakes and waterfalls. Why do we love that? Why do we love that? Why do we get lit up by either a painting of that or why do we get lit up by being in nature? Because it affects our reptilian brain because our reptilian brain goes, oh, this is fertile ground. This is where we can grow crops. This is where we can drink water. This is where we can raise a family. So our reptilian brain is like, oh, I love this because it increases our perception of um, of survival. It increases our chances of survival. I have a friend who's writing a book, um, which he's named um, Paradise is a State of Mind. And I asked him, I said, what is your definition of happiness? And he said, it is your subconscious perception of probability of survival. I'll say that again. It is your subconscious perception of probability of survival. Now, if we break that sentence down, what it really means is, is that we are happiest when our subconscious brain thinks that we, are, we have all the tools around us to survive as long as we can. So think clean drinking water, healthy food. If we've got friends around us, we're happy. Uh, if, we're, um, uh, uh, if we're eating food, we're healthy. All of these things increases our chances of survival, right? Food, you eat food, increases your chances of survival. You drink water, increases your chances of survival. You have friends and allies, increases your chances of survival. You have shelter, increases your chances of survival, which is why human beings love to buy homes and live in a house and increases your chances of survival. Your subconscious perception of probability of survival. So when I'm saying to you, get rid of visual stimuli including wine bottles and corkscrews and liquor cabinets and replace them with flowers and fruit bowls and healthy waters, this is going to naturally increase your happiness and decrease your feelings of uh, or your lack of confidence or your feelings of dismay or disharmony with the world because healthy signs of Flowers and water and good food and friends increases your likelihood, your probability of survival, which increases your happiness level. Day two, we talked about how to have fun and socialize alcohol-free. The latest neuroscience tells us that influencing comes down to 7% spoken words and only 93% how you say it, which means you can be in an argument with your romantic partner or your children and have the greatest logical argument in the world and think that you have won or that you're winning and still lose or still feel like you've lost because people aren't listening to your words. They're listening to how you convey your words. Let me give you an example here. Someone says, I'm really hungover after a night's drinking. Oh, 
Oh, I'm really hungover. Oh. Okay, now here's another one. Same words. <laughs> I'm really hungover. <laughs> I'm really hungover. See the difference there? Exactly the same words, completely different meaning. The first piece of person is filled with despair, regret. This next person is filled with almost like boasting, like, oh, yeah, last night was a big night. Oh, I'm so hungover. Same words, exactly the same words, completely different meaning. So when you are walking into a party or a function and your body language and your is is like, oh, I shouldn't drink, I can't drink, I'm not drinking, I'm doing this. I paid all this money, I invested all this money into a coach to get me long-term power over drinking and oh, it's supposed to be 90 days, but I'm on day 72. I would love, I would smash a beer right now. Jeez, I'd love a drink right now. Oh, I'm so stressed. Wish I could have a drink. If you're talking like that, then you are telling your subconscious that not drinking is unpleasant and that drinking is pleasant. You're convincing yourself, you see. You're also convincing those around you, your friends, your family, your colleagues, your loved ones, that not drinking is deprivation and that under normal circumstances you would choose to drink. That's what you're doing, which is why through our Project 90 process we encourage people to practice influencing people by how they say things. Forget what you say, how you say things. The example we use is with George Clooney here. George Clooney is very cheeky, very confident, has this, this, this you know, smart, this, this very sharp smile. He's kind of like cool, suave. If George Clooney came over to your house for a dinner party and you offered him a glass of wine and he just said, oh, no, I'm good, thanks. Can I just grab a soda water or a water or something? Are you really going to say to him, oh, what are you talking about, Mr. Clooney? Go on, have a wine. Go on, just have one. Come on. No, you're not. And the reason that you're not going to do that is because he's George Clooney. He's confident. He's suave. He's confident in his choice not to drink at your party. He's smiling. He's cheeky. And you're influenced by that. You're influenced by his voice, his tone, his body language. You are influenced by him. So when you are going out and the drinking, there's drinking around you, you just confidently, with your body language, say, yeah, I love some sparkling water, thank you. Oh, I'm not drinking at the moment. No, I'm good with water for now. Thank you. Be playful. Yeah, I'm going to get drunk on this water tonight. Look out. I'm going to swing from the rafters. Look out. I'm going to go crazy on this soda water tonight. In fact, one of our current Project 90 clients is celebrating his 43rd birthday tonight, and he's going to a bar with friends. His name's James. I've invited him to join us on this call. We'll see whether he comes in in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, his day, I think he's 70, 74 days alcohol free as of today. I was just speaking to him this morning on one of our, our coaching calls. And he's going to a birthday party tonight. And today we practiced for him um, making fun of himself with his friends and uh, diffusing the smiling assassins who were going to be at his birthday party tonight. And the smiling assassins uh, refers to all the people who are smiling as they offer you a drink. It's the waiter or the waitress who greets you at the bar. It is the, uh, it's the, uh, the friends who are like, hi, John, Chris, Chrissy, how you doing? Can I get you a drink? And these smiling assassins, you know, they're, they're smiling as they're offering you their attractively packaged poison. Think about every time you go into a restaurant. You go up there and said, I've made a booking, table for two, table for three. And if the table's not quite ready, what does the waitress do? She says, oh, the table's not quite ready, but uh, would you like to just go over and have a drink at the bar and I'll, I'll come and grab you when it's ready? And, of course, what's she trying to do? She's trying to get you to go over to the bar and order a couple of drinks, add another 20, 25 bucks to the, uh, to the tab for the night, drink their attractively packaged poison. Then when you sit down, the waiter or the waitress comes over and goes, good afternoon, mister, or good evening, sir, good evening, man. Wonderful to have you. Welcome. I'll be your server tonight. Can I get you started, get you guys started with some drinks? We've got some cocktails. We've got some, some wine, some beer. What can I get you? And now they're leading you in this, this path, and they're, they're smiling as they do it. Can I get you a glass of mediocrity, sir? Hello, ma'am. 
So lovely to meet you. May I get you started with a glass of shoulder fat? Hi. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. May I get you started with a glass of regret in the morning? Hey, can I uh, compromise your sexual performance this evening? Would you like a glass of erectile dysfunction? Would you like a glass of tiredness and fatigue? This is essentially what they're inviting you to do. And all of society is in on this. Everyone has been brainwashed. It's literally poison. You know where the word alcohol comes from? It's an Arabic term. It means alcohol. Do you know what alcohol means? Body eating spirit. Body eating spirit. So every time you drink your attractively packaged poison, you're drinking body eating spirit. It just eats away at you. It's eating away at your body and it's eating away at your spirit. But yeah, we've packaged it up into this beautiful, nice bottle and we have smiling assassins laughing and joking and, oh, it's wonderful. Do you want to see what alcohol does to people? Did you see Tom Brady who won the Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers recently, a couple months ago? I think he won his, I think it was his sixth Super Bowl he won. He's the GOAT, the greatest of all time. That's what GOAT stands for, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. Tom Brady, I think, won his sixth Super Bowl. And then after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won their Super Bowl, they all went out in Tampa and they went on a couple of boats and they were drinking and Tom Brady had the Super Bowl trophy and he threw it from one boat to the other. And thankfully his teammates caught it because if they dropped it, it would have sunk to the bottom and it would have been very embarrassing. This big trophy designed and produced by Tiffany, the jeweler. Anyway, Tom Brady got off that boat onto dry land sometime after that. And did you see him? Have you seen the clip of him? He's stumbling all over the place. He hardly knows where he is. I mean, talk about the great leveler. I mean, Tom Brady is really a specimen, right? He is like, like if we were going to send a man and a woman to go and meet aliens in outer space and say, these are, these are our best, we'd probably choose Tom Brady, right, as, as, the, as the male best because he's strong, he's handsome, he's uh, fit, he's healthy, uh, he's exceptional at what he does. He's married to um, Giselle, who's a very famous Brazilian supermodel. They're both very successful, have beautiful looking children. By all accounts, they're very healthy um, and very good people and successful people. They seem that way. I don't know them personally. I have interviewed Tom Brady before when I was a sports center anchor on ESPN, but you know, he's more of an acquaintance than anything else. But then you, you put some alcohol into that man. And you can just see the disintegration of what happens. I invite you later on, go on to YouTube and just type in Tom Brady celebrating Super Bowl Tampa. And you can see this video. I might be able to even pull it up now. And you can just see what happens with the effect of alcohol. I mean, it's not pleasant to see. Here we go. I'm going to play it. I'm just going to play it here. Let me just pull it up. There'll be a YouTube ad here, I'm sure. But let me just, uh, here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Let's play Tom Brady getting off the boat. Have a look at how drunk Tom Brady looks here. I mean, let's have another look at this. Look at him here. And I'm sorry if you're, if you're listening on the podcast, um, I'm just showing a video here of Tom Brady. And I just, just type in Tom Brady drunk. And it'll come up and you can see him. He's literally being carried off the boat. He's literally being carried off the boat. Not carried. I'm sorry. Carried is is an is a exaggeration. He's being held by a teammate who's holding him so he doesn't fall over. That's what alcohol does. And yet we celebrate this ridiculous thing. It's ridiculous. It's piss. It's a nonsense. And yet you're all listening to me. This is the tough love part coming in here. You're all listening to me, watching me, showing up here, wanting to stop and doing little to nothing about it on most cases until you finally step up and say, okay, now I'm going to do something about it. But you're hanging on. Like the idea of never drinking again feels so overwhelming to you. I'm like, shouldn't the idea of drinking any poison feel overwhelming to you? Society has it backwards. You're here worried about never being able to drink again. What you should be worrying about is like, do I have to drink again? I don't want to. Because I can tell you, I've had a life with alcohol and a life without and without is way better, way more more fun. If you're a business owner or entrepreneur, let me tell you something, you're going to make a lot more money. 
I've generated multi millions of dollars in sales from my businesses because I was alcohol free. Made nothing when I was drinking alcohol, tired, lethargic, not clear. So big change, big difference. And you'll start to see that the, the, the messaging, you'll start to see the marketing of Coors and Budweiser and wine, and you'll start to see how they always associate attractive looking people and good times. Or if it's men and beer, it'll be goofy looking guys having a good time together, being like, oh, they're funny guys. Oh, they're just funny having a couple of drinks. So the rewiring that takes place is not just me saying it's ridiculous. It's you going out there into the environment, into your workplace, into your family situations, coming home from the end of the day and, and practicing being alcohol free and enjoying it and loving it. It's not trying to hide yourself away from the world and lock yourself at home and never be able to go out to a party again because so many people associate, oh, I'm going to quit drinking. Oh, I won't be able to have any fun anymore. Nonsense. The most fun you will ever have is about to, about to fall upon you when you make this choice. We do an exercise in Project 90 where we have our clients write down their top 10 most memorable moments in their entire life. The, the, the moments that there's the most fun, the most enjoyable, the most um, that makes them feel the best. It can include events where there was alcohol. It can include things like getting married, the birth of your first child, um, first kiss. It can be anything, right? It can be lots of things. And what happens is when people write down their top top 10 list, they're surprised to find out that alcohol was either not present for most of the times or if it was present, it wasn't necessary. I mentioned before um, one of my clients, James. Um, I'm going to see if I can bring him on here. He's actually in Project 90 at the moment. Let's see if we can bring him on. Here he is. Uh, James, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but we can't see you. Can you turn your camera on? Let me check. Uh, while you're doing that, I was just saying, James, um, about the exercise we do whereby uh, – we have you write down the 10 things that your most, uh, your te- top 10 most memorable moments in your life. Um, what, w- what did you discover when you, when you did that, when you did that exercise? Happy birthday, by the way, James. Oh, thank you. So just, just a little bit of context. Who are you and what day of Project 90 are you? And uh, just give us a little bit of context on you. And then I'll ask you the question that I was asking you. My name's James. I'm in Georgia. Um, I've just turned 43 today, and today is my 76th day alcohol-free on the P90 program. Well done, mate. Round of applause. Uh, What was you drinking before you joined us in Project 90? Uh, Probably for the 15 years, I was a daily drinker, and, uh, you know, drinking a lot. And then once COVID hit, that about doubled, where I I was drinking about – Two handles a week, which is a total of about 3.5 liters a week. And that was just at home, but on top of going to the bar and stuff like that for a couple of beers. And how was that compromising your experience of life? Well, I mean, it, I was struggling to wake up at 11 o'clock to, to get started working, um, which I mean, it didn't really affect my job because it's production based and I was still pr- top producer. Uh, so no one was really complaining, but you know, I wasn't doing as much as I could. I knew that. Um, so now being alcohol free, I mean, even within the first week or two, I started just waking up seven, eight o'clock on my own, you know, without an alarm clock and just waking alert that mental fog's gone and, uh, just really able to just go at it and kick ass every day. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, happy 43rd birthday. Tell us what you're doing tonight. Where are you going? Who are you going with? And what's going to happen in relation well, to drinking? Uh, it's also a good friend of mine's birthday. So we're having a joint party at a local bar. So a lot of friends and family are going to be up there. So I'm going to go up there and hang out and uh, drink a lot of shots of uh, uh, ginger beer. <laughs> shots of ginger beer, huh? Is that ginger beer? It's not alcohol-free, but still got that kick. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Uh, and what do you think you're gonna? How, are you, how do you think you're gonna handle the smiling assassins of your friends tonight, who might be encouraging you to have a drink? 
oh, it's not going to be a problem. You know, I mean, if someone's really pushy, I'll just say, hey, I'll, I'll drink I'll ginger beer with you. But I appreciate it. But hey, I'm having a great time as it is. You know, bring me another soda, water, and lime. Yeah, nice. And you did know? you think that that was possible, you know, 74 days ago? 74 days alcohol free or 76? 76, yeah. 76, 76. Like, could you have seen yourself celebrating your birthday not not having alcohol like you know some months ago when you were drinking not really i mean that's just you know it's, it's a birthday just like new year's and stuff like that you know it just comes with drinking you know so this is going to be a first and i think it's going to be a lot of fun and, uh, and more importantly i'm going to be remem- able to remember it tomorrow and feel good about it <laughs> yeah great and that question i asked before was you know when you did the exercise where we had you write down your ten, top 10 life moments how many of those involved alcohol of the top 10, none. And what was interesting is I took it a step further and so and thought out, well, what are my top 10 worst moments? And most of those involved alcohol. <laughs> wow. What were some of your top 10 moments uh, out of curiosity? Uh, the wedding, uh, the birth of my kids, uh, my you know son graduating into, uh, through the Boy Scouts. Uh, you know, good family moments. Yeah, beautiful. So you didn't need any alcohol for those to make the top 10 list of your top 10 favorite moments of life. Right. Yeah. Alcohol wasn't present. And, uh, you know, I remember when doing that exercise, another thing that came to mind is said, well, how many things might've been on this list if I remember them? Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. Cause there were events there where you were drinking a lot, but you don't really remember them. And so they don't make the list. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. If anyone's live on the webinar here, or for those who are live, hi, Pete in the UK, nice to see you. Um, if you guys want to um, post a question here to James, who has a very handsome name, obviously, uh, just there's a and a box there. If you just type in your question for James, and just make sure it's for James F as opposed to James S, so we know that it's for that James as opposed to this James, um, we can have James answer that live on the call, but James, I was just sharing um, before you joined us here um, about being playful when you are being alcohol free, you know, making fun of yourself and being lighthearted. Um, what are some little fun things that you do when, uh, or that you will do tonight when people are encouraging you to have a drink? Um. You know, it, it, sometimes, you know, if someone asks me if I want a drink, I'll grab my glass of soda water. And like, no, I already got one, man. Thanks. <laughs> you know, and just kind of laugh it off. But I find that for the most part, you know, people don't care. You know, as, as long as you're, you're, they can tell you're having fun and you're not being a drag to them, you know, um, you know, they don't really care or, you know, a lot of people don't notice. I had one person uh, about, a couple of weeks ago was telling another friend, he's like, Oh, you know, James hasn't been drinking. He's like, well, I see him drinking here every night. It's like, no, he's not drinking alcohol. Like, oh, I didn't have no idea. So it's not a big de- as deal as we make it up in our head to be. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking there before, I just put up a, a screen uh, of, a, of a person telling a secret. I'll just share it again here. Uh, and uh, the big secret is that nobody really cares that you're not drinking. It's just you think that they care, but really the big secret is that no one really cares that much, if at all. Um, we have a question here from another James. We've got three Jameses here. James asks, did you have any moments in the last 70-plus days that you felt like giving up and drinking, um, as a, a, meaning like cravings, and how did you manage that? Not that any that were powerful enough to really want to give up or think about it because, it, you know, I, I made a big commitment and, for the, you know, just for that 90 days, I knew I can do 90, you know, and from there, I'll make a decision when I'm in clear of mind. And we talked about it earlier. I know I'm going to at least do another 90 from that point. Um, but I do remember a couple of times that it's just like, man, you know. I really, really would like to have a drink tonight. You know, like one day I've uh, done a lot of work. So I was just exhausted and just felt like 
just completely zoning out and just having a drink and just letting my mind go. And, uh, you know, so the first, it was like, you know, my mind's t- t- trying to play tricks on me. It's like, Hey, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It's not like that much has changed. And, and I had to stop and think, well, wait a bit, you know, you, you know, every morning's so much better, every, you know, you know, um, my relationship with my kids is better, you know, and my, my, with my friends and, you know, family, it's like, why would I even take a chance on giving that up? You know, it's, it's just not worth it. And so a lot of times it's, you know, uh, remembering what, what's driving you. And like, I remember Doug, I think, I think it was Doug when he hit his 90, he had a list of 20 things that, um, that were most important to him as far as being alcohol free. And I think that's a great idea to do where you can then just go down that list. If ever you have that craving saying, okay, why am I doing this? Oh yeah. I feel great. You know, I have more energy, you know, I, I, I respect my, I don't question what did I do last night? Am I in trouble <laughs> every morning? You know, so there's just, there's lots of reasons and you just got to remind yourself of those. Nice one, James. Um, what uh, what inspired you to book a call in like how long were you thinking about doing this for before you actually booked a call so just to just to clarify when we don't accept everyone like we invite you into the program if we feel like you're you're a fit into project 90 i mean and the way that we do that is that people must have a verbal conversation with us so we can get clear on what your goals are we can get clear that you would be a good cultural fit for our for our community um, you know, walk you through what we'll do for you, walk you through the investment. Uh, and if everything feels good, then folks will, you know, if we feel like you're a fit, we'll invite you in and then folks enroll. If we don't feel like you're a fit, then we'll just um, give you some resources and, and try to refer you supportively elsewhere. Um, a lot of people who've become clients have shared that the hardest part for them has been actually booking that call in the first place. Um, what was the what was the experience like for you? How long were you thinking about it before you actually booked the call and and enrolled? And what finally pushed you over the edge to say, "All right, I'm going to do this." Yeah, um, for me, I had been thinking about it for a long time before I even heard about your program, um, and uh, so I knew it was something I needed to make changes with. But you know, the, the really the only model I had in my mind with assistance quitting drinking is AA and it's just like you know I've been to one of those meetings that's that's not who I am you know I just didn't feel like that was a fit for me um you know it's a great program it helps people you know I, I'm not dissing it just wasn't I, I couldn't identify with it so I, I think I saw your you know videos on some, on, on a YouTube commercial or something and went to the website saw the you know little introduction and I'm like, what the heck, you know, I'll just give a call. It's not going, it's not going to cost me anything. You know, you can schedule a time and everything. And if, it was Russell who called me. Um, Russell's one and, of our Allman coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we had a great conversation. He, he basically told me his story and, you know, was just, just kind of laid it out there. And I was like, wow, it sounds like you're telling my story <laughs> you know, for me. And, um, you know, it just kind of made a lot more sense to me. You know, because, you know, I, I don't feel like I have a disease or anything like that. I just made choices to drink alcohol and got to into a bad pattern and just need a, someone to show me the way out of that. And, and that's what this program's done for me. Some of the folks are probably wondering what, what happens inside of the program. Do you want to just tell them what happens in terms of what you get in videos and what do you get with coaching calls and things like that? That's great. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of benefits to it. I mean, you, you get the daily video that you provide that's normally just you know a few minutes, but it's a, it's a just especially it seems like the first couple of weeks you, you you have that uh, the right video for the right time. I guess uh, you know because it's like you already know. Okay, day three you're going to be about this point and kind of talk about different things. So it's like oh, okay, yeah, so this is normal and stuff like that. Um, the zoom calls are great, you, you know, cause you get to really get to, uh, meet and get a little more intimacy with some of the other people. And, uh, 
you know, uh, share different things that's going on, trouble you're having, uh, you know, the celebrations you're having. And, uh, and it helps you know that you're not the only one going through different things and helps you see what's going to happen or what could happen next. So you, it doesn't blindside you. And one of the big things too, is the Marco Polo community. That is just like walking into a family reunion of family you didn't know you had. I mean, they just, just, and, you know, embrace you with open arms day one. Um, and it's a lot of great people. And every time someone, you know, uh, graduates out, it's like you're sad to see a friend go and can't wait to see him on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome, James. Um, for anyone here who'd like to have one of those exploratory conversations, I've just put a link in there. It's at alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule. Um, you can book a call there and we can see whether this might be a fit for you. I'll give you a little bit more details of that in just a second. But, James, thanks for joining us and have a great birthday party tonight. Okay, appreciate uh, it. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you uh, you being here. So uh, that was uh, that was James. James, thanks very much, mate. It was great to have you here. Um, so let's continue on here. A couple of things on what you, should, what you might want to drink instead. Uh, well, the answer is anything else, <laughs> really. Um, but some suggestions could be club soda, a splash of cranberry, two lime slices, sparkling water with lemon and ice, Perrier and cranberry, virgin mojito, quite frankly, just water in the fridge. So there are a couple of nice suggestions. James said he's going to be doing shots tonight of uh, ginger ale <laughs> or ginger beer maybe. Um, on day three, we did the alcohol lost money calculator. And what was fascinating is that many people were telling me that they felt like they were four or five out of 10. And that's, and some folks were leaving hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table um, because they didn't have that clarity and focus and energy. I know that when I, uh, when I personally quit drinking within uh, 18 months, uh, I had a, uh, well, sorry, within like two weeks, actually, of quitting drinking, I got an audition for Sports Center on ESPN and I got the job. This is me hosting Sports Center on ESPN, which is really fun. Here's me, Magic Johnson. And then um, it just continued on with there, the clarity and the focus. I learned how to build an e-commerce business and I started this Swanee's Blue Light Blocking Glasses company, Swanee Sleep, which produces blue light blockers. Um, you can see here some of our sales back in 2016. We did like $2.1 million back then. Um, and then uh, in the first year, we actually did we did a million dollars in revenue. It was a million-dollar business in 12 months. And we got featured in Entrepreneur Magazine, uh, which was kind of fun. So for you, if there's something that you're really wanting to, to do, if there's something that's been eating away at you for a while and you're like, I really want to do this, Having that clarity and focus is going to drive business performance. Or if you're in a job that you don't like, it will inspire you or encourage you to get out of the crappy job and into uh, a job that you love and appreciate. Time keeps ticking. Father time remains undefeated, remember? And I keep reading stories of people where they interview people on their deathbed and they say, what are your top regrets in life? And they say, they always say the same thing, that their regrets include not spending enough time with family, not doing what they really wanted to do, not following the path. You know, a lot of them say that they just followed the path of someone else. They did what society expected of them. They did what their mother expected of them, their father expected of them. They did all these things that other people wanted them to do and they didn't trust themselves to do it. And the reason why you're drinking a lot of the time is because you're trying to numb the pain of those choices. You're unhappy a lot of times dissatisfied with what's going on in life and the alcohol is just masking that so what we do and what we get to do have fun doing it is get rid of the alcohol and we have some water here and give you an opportunity to step into your power and do all the cool things that you want to do uh the coach victoria was on the call yesterday and on day four she shared some of her ways to reduce and eliminate cravings some simple ways really is just breathing we can just breathe in for like five, like, and just hold it and then breathe out. Tony Robbins does this thing called priming 
where you breathe in through the nose and very quickly out through the mouth like this. And do that 20 times and it changes your whole physiology. Another way to do it is to breathe in really heavily and then really clench everything in your body, just squeeze everything. Just be sitting down when you do that because I've done this before and I've actually got so kind of lightheaded that I've, I've fallen off the chair. I'm just like, whoa, and almost fainted. Now, I'm not encouraging you to faint, obviously, but I'm just trying to illustrate to you that when you have a craving for a drink, it's not that you're craving a drink. You're just craving a different feeling. And you can get a different feeling by just breathing, by changing your whole physiology. Remember, you don't want to drink to feel better. You just want to feel better. And you can do that one million different ways that don't involve drinking attractively packaged poison. The earth has a... Uh, uh, an energetic pulse to it called the Schumann resonance. And when you put your bare feet on the ground, the Schumann resonance comes through the earth into your body and you feel calm and you feel peace and you feel relaxed. Bare feet on grass. That's why when you walk on the beach, you feel great. When you walk on grass, you feel great because you are connecting to the earth, which reduces your stress and your anxiety. Just going to share my screen here one more time. The Schumann Resonance is right here. I encourage you to Google it. And it is an energetic pulse that comes through your body, connects to you, and makes you feel nice and calm. Okay? It alters both the brain and the heart synchronization and changes melatonin levels, which is important for a great, great night's sleep. Another way that you can change your state is by movement, exercising. I mentioned this morning, you know, I woke up this morning uh, I had 10 hours of restful sleep and then I got into my gym clothes and I went to the gym here in the place that I'm staying and I did uh, 15 minutes of running and did 10 minutes of sprints, 15 minutes overall on the, on the treadmill and that was enough. Came back, showered, did a coaching call, went and had a beautiful breakfast, feeling amazing as opposed to many most people who tend to wake up tired and lethargic and then eat poorly throughout the day don't work out, and then they're tired at the end of the night, so tired, of course, that they want to relieve the stress and the fatigue and just, oh, let me have a drink. Oh, I'm just kind of relax. I'm so tired. Let me just have a glass of wine. Let me just have a beer. And this vicious circle continues. We want to talk about the magic formula. Here is the not-so-magic formula. These are proven ineffective methods. AA, treatment centers, trying to do it on your own, willpower, motivation, and moderation. Those are just losing strategies. AA doesn't work. Treatment centers don't work. Trying to do it on your own doesn't work. Willpower doesn't work. Motivation doesn't work. And moderation doesn't, doesn't work, at least until you've gone 90 consecutive days. AA is doom and gloom. My name's James and I'm an alcoholic, but you're not really an alcoholic. Inpatient or outpatient treatment, you've got to travel, you've got to drive there, you've got to like stay inside, and you've got to cough up $100,000 plus. Trying to do it on your own is lonely and is ineffective, doesn't work, and it will keep you stuck. You will waste the next decade of your life trying to do this on your own. Sure, you may have some success for 30 days here or there, but it's a very, very, very slippery slope. And unless you can get it done, one and done, rewire your brain around alcohol over a 90-day process, this is going to go on for years and people around you are going to suffer because of that. So what does work? What's a super effective way? What is the simple, effective, proven way? Well, it's a five-step five step formula. Five, coaching, accountability, community, fun, skin in the game. If you remove one of these things, right, if I remove one of those, if I remove the coaching and you only have accountability, community, ease and fun and skin of the game, it doesn't work. If you keep the coaching but you remove the accountability, it doesn't work. If you keep the coaching and the accountability but you remove the community, so it's just like you're working with a coach and that's it, it doesn't work. If it's hard and unpleasant, it doesn't work. And if it's free, it doesn't work. So if you remove any of those, those five pillars, the, the, the structure falls apart, it crumbles. So why is there an investment? Why do you have to pay 
for coaching and accountability and community because it's a form of accountability in and of itself. And when you pay, you pay attention. And when you invest in yourself, you focus, you value it, you really get this done. I can't tell you, I can't tell you in the beginning of this thing, I used to help people out with some discounts and I, I would do these kind of things where it's like, oh, I'll make it half price and you can come in. And people came in completely ineffective for them because they didn't value it. They were so busy focused on how much it costs and how much they've got to pay that when they got in there, they were the worst clients. They were the most troublesome clients. They were the least committed and they were the ones who complained the most. So I don't work with those people. That's why I'm always saying if you are an entrepreneur or you're a business owner or you're an investor or you're a retiree or you're a realtor, any of those kind of folks who have already invested in things before and understand the power of return on investment and quite frankly are willing to put their money where their mouth is, that's why I work with those folks. That's why I like to work with those folks. Now, 95% of my stuff is free. You'll find it on the internet. I can't tell you how many times I've run Facebook ads and I get absolutely abused by people in the comments. People say, you're a scumbag. You're a snake oil salesman. Why are you charging to help people? You shouldn't be charging. You're a disgrace. Oh, you should go to AA. It's free. I can't believe they're actually charging people for this. I can't believe people are dumb enough to pay, pay you money to learn how to quit drinking. You're a scumbag. And by the way, in, the, in, the, in AA's big book, one of the first things it says is, is that we, have, we don't fight with anyone. We don't discourage anyone, any other, uh, anyone from doing any other program. We don't combat or fight anyone. And yet here they are, the same people in AA who are absolutely being vicious and vile and posting these nasty comments. I'm telling you, I'll tell you this, like I've said it a thousand times, if you do not invest in yourself, you will not, you will not get the breakthrough that you want. In order to get the body you want, you've got to invest in yourself. You've got to go to the gym and you've got to lift weights. You've got to eat the right food. In order to make money in the real estate market, you've got to invest your money, put down your deposit to get the, to buy that property. And then two or three years, hopefully you've got a capital appreciation and you can sell it and make a profit. In order to grow um, your own vegetable garden, you have to plant the seeds, then you have to water the seeds, make sure they get enough sunlight, keep watering, keep nurturing, keep getting water, keep sunlight. You've got to invest, invest, invest in it until finally you have this beautiful flower bed or, or, or vegetable garden which produces food. So if you remove having skin in the game from the five-step formula and it's free, you don't value it, you don't pay attention to it, you don't grow and you remain stuck. And I think if you look within yourself, you'll know that to be true. And that's okay. I still get people bashing me all the time. And again, this is not about me. I'm just trying to illustrate to you. Have a real, really good think about those times where you, someone's given you something for free, you haven't paid for it, you haven't invested in yourself. Do you really value it? Or do you just kind of like, eh? Now, the fun part, it has to be fun because if it's not fun, you're going to want to break free of prison because you'll feel like you're in a prison. That's why we try and make this fun. I think I'm a pretty fun guy. Uh, and then the community, like you just saw one of our members, James, the community is huge. The accountability is, is vital. And the coaching is, I mean, no Olympian in the history of Olympic sports ever went to the Olympics without a coach. If you want to be a high performer in anything, you've got to have a coach. But if you want to keep lone woofing it, this is the tough love coming in now. If you want to keep lone woofing it, doing it on your own, that's okay. You can keep doing it on your own, but it's a very, very lonely path. And it's ineffective according to all the studies. I said on the call the other day that, um, well, I actually offered some people um, an early bird special and some people took me up on that. I'm not offering that early bird special anymore because I've got to be truthful and in integrity. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who are on the call, uh, now I want to reward you for being here with me live. Uh, if you're watching the replay, um, uh, fantastic. Would have loved to have had you here live. I'm, I appreciate some people can't make it here live because they're in different time zones. 
work, working with us in Project 90 is $7,500 um, US dollars as a three pay. So you can get started for $2,500 and then you've got another um, couple of um, payments to do to get up to $7,500. Or it's a one-time payment of $6,500. The way that we see whether you are a fit for that program is you book a call and we have a conversation and we talk about it and we'll walk you through the outline. And you can do that by going to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule. Now, if you're listening on a mobile phone and you'd like to have the conversation just to see if this is a fit for you, you can actually text me at the number 44222. So send me a text at the number 44222. I'm going to do this now. And I just want you to type in the word Project 90. Project and then the number 90. And when you do that, I'm going to text you right back uh, a link where you can um, click the link and schedule a time to speak to one of my coaches. For those who are on the call, uh, I want to reward you guys for being on the call live and taking action. Um, if you book a call and you enroll in Project 90, then I, I will give you a 45-minute one-on-one call with me where we will take extra special care. We'll walk you through. I will walk you through everything. I'll listen to your unique circumstances, and I will give you a very specific tailored plan to help you and your situation. Uh, so that's my promise, promise to you, a free 45-minute um, coaching call. Uh, for those of you who are on the call. And I have a list here of all of the people who are on the call. My assistant's typed it all out. So I'll know that when you book the call, um, if we invite you into Project 90 uh, and you enroll with this, then I will certainly reach out to you and I will give you a 45-minute call and we're going to go over anything that you want to go over that is unique to you and your, your circumstances. Um, and that can be a coaching call about anything, by the way. It doesn't just have to be around quit drinking. We can talk about your business. We can talk about scaling your business. We can talk about e-commerce. We can talk about health, fitness, uh, relationships, anything you want. Um, so, yeah, that is my promise to you. So uh, if you're listening and you want a link to that um, or you want me to send you a text message with the link where you can schedule a time to speak to one of our coaches, um, Send me a text if you're in the US to the number 44222 and just type in the word Project 90 and I will send you back a link where you can schedule a call with one of our coaches. Just let them know that you are on this call if you do uh, and then just make sure you say to them and also James promised me a 45-minute one-on-one call as well. Just make sure you let one of my coaches know that ahead of time just for double uh, safety and insurance on that, Okay. Um, if you are on the call live now and you want to, you, you just know that you're in and you don't really need to have the exploratory call for the next, uh, 13 minutes until we wrap up here, I'm going to answer some questions now. Uh, you can text me at this number and just say in, and I'll not only give you the, uh, the 45 minute coaching call, but I'll also um, take a, another little bit off the price for you as well. So just a reminder, um, it's as little as 2,500 to start. And then you've got another two months after that to cover the remaining. So $7,500 on a payment plan and it's $6,500 as a one-time payment. And if you would like to start and you're in and you don't even want to have the, the, the exploratory call and you text me at my mobile phone number, which I just put in there, the word in, then I'll give you a little bit more. I'll make make the program a little bit more cost effective for you uh, as well. Uh, either way, uh, you're going to get the 45 minute one on one call in addition to that as well. Okay. Um, so uh, the link is alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule or text me at the number 44222, the word project 90, and I'll text the schedule back to you. You'll have that call in the next two or three days. Um, and then uh, if all seems good and everyone's happy, then we'll have you in and we will introduce you to our community. We'll get started. We'll get clear on what your goals are for the next 90 days and we're going to help you um, to achieve them. Um, some of the, the benefits that people get when they go through through this is feeling better, looking better, performing better, 
um, joining other high-performing, like-minded entrepreneurs and high performers who are quitting alcohol. Um, some people get to scale their business, have outstanding relationships, have a deep impact, create an amazing connected family, build a legacy. Um, here are some folks who've done particularly well. I mentioned Angela Ponsford before and Joe Worley. Um, by the way, that's the link there, alcoholfreelifestyle.com schedule. Um, if you want to find out a little bit more about it, you can always go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash apply. And if you scroll down, you, there's some videos here of some folks who've had amazing transformations, um, particularly around relationships, happiness, and wealth creation. So I'll just play this little video here. This is if relationships are your goal, then um, here's a little video of some people who've transformed their relationships as a result of being alcohol free with Project 90. I'm a better dad. I'm a better husband. I have a heaps better relationship with my nine-year-old twins, spending so much more time with them. My social life feels better. Family life feels a ton better. My relationships with my family is so much better. She's just really excited about it. She's got the man she married back and not, you know, what this last 15 years have really robbed. The confidence part, you think that alcohol gives you confidence, but I realized how much confidence and real connection I had without it. I'm a much better, I think, listener. And uh, my sister said that I was way more calm and much better to talk to. My children have noticed I'm more present. I'm more patient. I love where I put myself out there in the world with my family, friends. Uh, yeah, so let me just show you another one. Um, Okay, let's just play another little video here for a second. So let's just share the screen. So happiness, if happiness is a, is a goal for you, then there are some folks here who are uh, particularly uh, happy with their life or happier now that they have been alcohol-free. Here are some folks. My happiness level is just so much higher than it was before. <laughs> I smile a lot more and people smile back. Everything just keeps getting better. I feel just super. If I could have felt this way six months ago, a year ago, I would have been a heartbeat. I didn't realize that I could feel so fabulous in my life at this age. I feel happier. Feeling confident and happy and joyful. I feel amazing. I feel very, very good. Jessica Gaines Java, she's really rocked it as well. Let me just show you this this particular video. In fifties Hollywood siren, if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> so congratulations. I like that. <laughs> Hi, I am Jessica Gaines Jarbo, and I am one year alcohol free today. I've slimmed down. I feel like I have more tone. My complexion is clearer. Uh, I feel like I have like blood and rosiness to my cheeks. My hair is better. I'm a real estate broker. I would drink to calm down. I would take stimulants and drink a bunch of coffee to get through the day. And I was just surviving rather than thriving. My marriage was ending. I was working constantly. I was drained, feeling like I was in quicksand up to my neck, getting kicked in the head and still getting up and going to work every day. I mean, I felt shameful about how much I was drinking. Just that feeling of complete isolation and loneliness. And I was so completely done with it. You came into my life and we had our, um, and my voice is shaking. It's just so, uh, my whole life has changed. So it just feels very powerful. Um, when we talked, I, it was just like a yes. It was every cell in my being saying yes. Because I knew no matter what it was, what the cost or what the time commitment if it meant I would be alcohol free at the end, I wanted to do it. Being in a group that celebrated, you know, being an entrepreneur, celebrating life, looking forward, like what can your life look like? Not what are you giving up? What can it be? What are you making room for? What has been your highest point during the past year alcohol free? I'm going to cry just from you asking that question. Just seeing all of the possibilities of the bar night that I wasn't even open to because I didn't have the motivation, I didn't have the energy, I didn't have the clarity. My relationship with my boyfriend, we're so connected. We can be conscious in every conversation and 
I'm in charge of my own emotions and my own reactions. And that wasn't the case before. Seeing all of the things that I've accomplished. I don't even think about it anymore. It doesn't even occur to me to drink. That's how much my life has changed. So yeah, <laughs> I've gotten super motivated about work. I'm thinking about adopting, lots of traveling, and you know, just keep finding new worlds. It keeps getting easier and easier. I don't feel like I have to push. It's worth it. If it's something that is pulling at your heart and keeps coming back to you, it, it means that you want to do it and it's worth it. It has changed my life. Kind of cool. Kind of cool for me to see it anyway. Uh, yeah, so if you've got any... Um, um, let me just send a message here. I can see a few people here are sending me messages um, privately. Um, um, yeah, so alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash uh, schedule is the link. Uh, what has been... Um, what's been valuable for you about this five-day challenge. I would love to hear from you. What has felt valuable for you? Go ahead and type in the comments down below. Uh, I would love to know what has felt particularly valuable for you. If you're listening on the podcast, thanks for listening. And I know you haven't you haven't had an opportunity to see uh, what is going on, um, like the people in the live webinar have been have had an opportunity. But here are some more folks here as well. Um, Roseanne says, my life has been completely transformed by following the alcohol-free lifestyle methods. I lost over 20 pounds and improved my health metrics, blood pressure and resting heart rate significantly. And I reintroduced myself to the me who was psychologically enslaved. I went from someone who hated looking in the mirror to someone who believes she can change the world. Thank you, James Swanick. I am eternally grateful. Um, Glenn Granger, this was simply the best decision that I have made in a very long time. James and his colleagues provided maximum support and encouragement. Plus, I was able to network with others around the world who were also interested in making positive steps towards a more healthy lifestyle. It isn't simply about alcohol-free living. It's about changing your mindset. Today, I approach each day with positivity and clarity. My decision to embark on this journey was triggered by some poor blood test and blood pressure results. Without going into details, I can share that all of these markers have been dramatically improved. If you're like me, you'll wonder whether to make this significant investment. Let me assure you, it is entirely worth it. Uh, Chanel, I love seeing all the new people joining this group. I lost weight and gained mental clarity. I don't regret doing this coaching pro program. Love the excellence and positivity. Here's what I gained. Productivity with work, better health, way flatter tummy, relationships improve, increase in confidence, decrease in anxiety. George Bird, James and his team set me on a new life course that I didn't think was possible. The process of knocking alcohol out of my routine changed the way I think and gave me a new inner confidence that I have control over life and how I choose to live it. I highly recommend the process. You won't regret it. Douglas Rice, I am one third of the way through with James and his amazing team. The AF community within the program has been key to my journey along with the coaching that is provided. Stephen says, today, six months alcohol-free. At least it was back in October, so we must be, I think he's a year alcohol-free now. Here's Patty, before and after photos. It's kind of cool. Kind of nice to see. Uh, all right. Any final questions, go ahead and type in the questions. Uh, I've got some people who are texting me. I've got some folks had a missed call from someone while we we're on this call. I will get back to you shortly. Um, we've got someone else has booked a call. Very good. Congratulations to those who booked the call. Uh, I get a text message alert here whenever uh, new calls come in. I get a little text that comes through uh, or people book calls. Yeah. So, congratulations. Hope this has been helpful for you. I'm sure it has by virtue of the fact that people have been messaging me. Oh, I said at the beginning of the call I was going to find that email that someone sent to me today. Let's see if I can find it after all. Um, 
what was it? Let's have a look here. Where was the email? Nope, I still can't find it. Sorry about that. I was hoping that I'd be able to find it, but uh, no, I can't find it. So I'm not going to waste your time with um, umming and ahhing here. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, whatever you choose to do, remember this, a life without alcohol is way better than a life with. Take it from my experience. I've been uh, on this planet 45 years <coughs> and I haven't drunk. <coughs> Excuse me. This is not the time to uh, <laughs> lose my voice. I think all this talking, I've lost my voice a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I stopped drinking when I was 34. Yeah, I stopped drinking when I was 34. And the last 10 and a half years of my life, last 11 years have been the best. No question. No question. Health, wealth, love, and happiness. I get to truly experience life. And I wish you that type of happiness. I love my life. I love how I feel. I love how I show up in the world. And you know what the coolest thing is, is that I have a business here that actually truly helps people. And that's really nice. That feels good to have this kind of impact on people's lives and get paid for it. It's pretty nice. And to have the amazing coaches and team that I have, I want to thank my assistant, Melanie, our top coach, Victoria, our past coaches, uh, Kevin, our current uh, other coaches, Jim and Alfie. I want to thank uh, Lewis over in Colombia who helps us with our video marketing. I want to help uh, thank Risa who helped me with the marketing. I want to help uh, my marketing team of Kevin and um, Josh, uh, and Rudy for their amazing help in getting our message out into the world. And I want to thank all of our existing clients who step up every day, take that leap, trust us to be able to help them and who ultimately get amazing breakthroughs. All right, that's it for me. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you for being here and look forward to working with some of you and look forward to following the progress of others as well. See you. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.